A great video. Thank you. The narration really helps. I'm currently struggling with designing canopies for a FW189. I'd be interested in your thoughts on how this might be best approached. Ideally I want to 3D print the framework and lay in acetate panels. A lot of World War II German planes have similar angled canopy structures so this might be of interest to a number of your subscribers. Thanks again. At RCGDL. Hi at RCGDL. I think I've found a relatively quick way to do this. I came up with several ideas but this seemed to be the most straightforward way. What you see is a result of what this video is about to detail out. To give you a high level overview. We will be drawing sketches and moving the sketches into place to produce a frame. From there we'll loft between the sketches producing panels and then thickening those panels to turn them into bodies. Once they're in body format, we will make the cuts for the windows. I first started by tracing the front side of the canopy from the top view and tracing directly onto the canvas. This will provide the general framework for the shape. Notice I only traced to half the canopy as I will use the mirror command later. Next, I moved over to the front view and traced in the first tier of the canopy. After tracing the first tier, I switched back over to the side view and used the move command to move the sketch of the first tier in place according to the plans. Afterwards, I moved back to the front view and traced in the vertical lines that would connect my first sketch and second sketch. From here, I moved the vertical lines using the move command. When using the move command, be sure to select the point to point move. The first two sketches were sketched in a way where there are the same number of points. This makes it easier to move the vertical lines in place. Here you see me move the vertical lines manually. This is actually a mistake or rather inefficient. What I should have done, which you will see in the next steps, was to draw the vertical lines with 3D sketch selected in the sketch palette. This would allow me to draw the lines directly from point to point on the previous sketches. Sorry, please bear with my inefficiency for a few seconds. At this point, pun intended of course, our framework is starting to take shape. And because I use the point to point selection on the move command, I know all the lines intersect which is important for later steps. Now I'll draw in the second tier and move it into place according to the plans. From here, I can connect the tiers by drawing a 3D sketch as previously mentioned and eliminate the need to move the connecting sections around. When using the 3D sketch lines, bring your mouse directly from point to point. You'll see the cursor change when you select a point. Now that we have a framework in place, you can start modeling the rest of the canopy using 3D sketches and connecting the points. Let's move on to the next step. Now it's time to create a surface using the frame we've created. Move over to the surface menu at the top of the command ribbon and use the loft command to connect the various panels. All the lofted panels are separate entities and you'll need to use the stitch command to turn them into a single entity. The stitch command can be found in the surface menu. When using the stitch command, the boundaries of the entities will turn green indicating a good stitch. Next, we will use the thicken command to turn this surface entity into a body. By turning it into a body, we can manipulate it easier. The thicken command can be found in the create menu located on the tool ribbon. Because I didn't scale the drawings, I had to play around with different values for the thickening process. At this point, I'm going to take advantage of the 3D sketch function to draw in the boundary of the missing piece and then extruding it to the same thickness we used previously. As a result, we now have two bodies, one of from the previous steps, in the new triangle section. Use the combined body function found in the modify menu and join the two bodies into a single body. Now it's time to start cutting out windows to our body. 
The front window was level with no twist, so I was able to draw directly onto the face and cut using the extrude function. The other windows required using the plane at angle command found in the construct menu and selecting a vertical line and moving it to match the surface as close as possible. Draw your window directly onto the inserted plane. Then use the split body command with the window sketch as the cutting tool. Repeat this for all the windows. Now it's time to mirror our frame using the mirror command. Because I purposely placed the canvas at the origin center and split the canvas in half, I can use the plane as the mirroring tool. I had an issue with the mirror command with overlapping parts and Fusion did not like it and would not allow me to complete the mirror and join command. I left this section in to show some of the issues that may come up when certain details are overlooked. In this case, the lateral lines on the sketches did not start at the same point producing the overlap. In the end, I moved the bodies apart and fused them together using the combine body tool. At RCGDL, I hope this video was what you were looking for. To continue this process, I would draw in new sections and using the line tool with the three sketch option checked. Then follow the process of thickening, cutting, and combine bodies until you have the full sections. Also, because you're modeling using plastic model kits, you have a lot of detail that you can transfer to your fusion model without having to infer details. Thank you for the question and supporting the channel.